So I became a senior data analyst in just over two years. Here's how I did it. I'm going to cover some key things that accelerated my growth faster than others may have done. I went into a junior data analyst role straight out of university. I went from straight from junior analyst, skipped the data analyst part and went straight into senior analyst. And I just changed jobs into a new job. I'm a senior business data analyst here. And just as a quick background, I studied finance and actuarial science at university. So not too much on the data analytics side of things, but I still dealt with data. And I think the most important thing was being able to leverage those skills dealing with finance data and translating them into more data specific responsibilities. If this video ends up being useful and entertaining, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Without any further ado, let's get straight into it. So I've actually made a video about my first month as a data analyst. I'll link that video up here and down in the description below as well. I'd initially started off by completing the most manual tasks that the team had, just to gain an understanding of their processes, their workflows and, and everything in between. And then they slowly start integrating me into their daily workflows, the more important reporting, the automation side of things, the larger projects the software projects and the data engineering side of things. And so that was very, very helpful in terms of maintaining a foundational understanding of how processes worked. And that helped hugely because then I could take a step back when I actually got involved in the more complex projects, I could take a step back and really understand where there was space to improve something, where there was the opportunity for an improvement in efficiency where there was an opportunity for maybe we look at this slightly in a slightly different way that'll make it more efficient that'll utilize less resource and so my advice to anybody going into their first junior data analyst data analyst even apprenticeship is understand the processes from the ground up if that means you have to spend some more time on the weekend just understanding everything i would recommend you do that because it helps hugely in terms of progression i was lucky in the sense that the team i was in previously had a very startup style entrepreneurial style environment not only did i have to take on multiple responsibilities that were outside the job description but it also gave me the opportunity to play around with loads of tools and softwares that otherwise i maybe wouldn't have if i was just siloed into data analytics and never saw the side of data engineering the data science the data pipelines the finance side of things the investment side of things if i never saw the actuarial side of things i was lucky i had that constant stream of exposure and so that helped accelerate my development but i started off with basic skills in excel barely i just knew about sql i didn't know much syntax at all and then python we did one program with python module at university so not really much of a background in heavy data analytics power bi i think when i started power bi I, I don't even know if i knew what power bi did but what i sort of accidentally did was over deliver that meant taking ownership of projects that were given to me trying my best not just to deliver a project but to actually understand where it goes to solve the business problem that's trying to be solved where the client is really looking to fix something and then addressing that in my analysis directly i'm going to go through a couple of different sections i'm going to cover the background i'm going to cover my first role i'm going to cover some key things that accelerated my my growth and then also i'm going to go over some of the intangible things that really set me apart and let me progress faster than others may have done things like office politics and being visible and things like that and relationships things like that and then following on from that and then following on from that i was doing most of my learning on the job like sql again i'd known what sql did but little to no experience beforehand so i was learning on the job I was learning from other analysts, pulling information from them. I was taking courses. I created a business case to support the training of new analysts and new hires, which ultimately led us to inviting specialist lecturers and trainers to teach us in advanced Excel, advanced SQL. And even I managed to put in a case for all of us analysts to get a subscription to an online learning platform. And that's where I completed an advanced SQL for data analytics certification, which was pretty helpful. And that really helped me in understanding stored procedures and CTEs and joining tables and dealing with more rows of data than I otherwise would have been. That certification was very helpful and it looks good on my CV as well. It also taught me how to write complex queries and then test them. And, and that was one of the key reasons I got the job I'm in now, because that was one of the interview questions that they asked me. One thing that really helped me progress in my job was communicating with different stakeholders. I was communicating with a whole range of different stakeholders from other analysts who had the technical knowledge that I could really get down into the technicalities with them. And then I was communicating with CEOs who had little to no knowledge even of the technical things I was talking about. And so I had to provide them with an overview of what the data and my analysis was showing. And that really helped me to 
understand how to communicate with different people, what exactly they want to see, how to get to the bottom of what they want to see and hear, and how to present to different levels of technical expertise and seniority. The next thing that really helped me to accelerate my growth is that you have to build trust in the people that you're delivering your analysis to. That could be clients, it could be your teammates even, it could be maybe you're doing a piece of a, piece of a project within the team. You need to be able to demonstrate that they're able to trust you. They're able to offload a piece of work to you and they can trust you'll get it done. You'll get it done to a good standard and that they can rely on you. My outlook was give me any and everything and I'll do it. Give me any and everything, I'll do it. I'll be honest, I'll probably bug a lot of people asking them for help, asking them for advice, asking them to help me understand a particular problem, asking them to help me understand a syntax, a file location, asking them a bunch of questions. But I was also lucky in the sense that they had that kind of culture in place where I wasn't I wasn't siloed into just trying to understand something by myself. I could actually go to them and ask them questions about the work they'd done in the past. I could ask them questions about how best I could deliver a project. And so I was lucky in that sense. Saying yes to things outside of the job description really helped me accelerate my career growth. And not in the sense that it showed that I was working particularly hard. The things that weren't in my job description, I wouldn't have been able to use those tools and softwares and broaden that scope and get exposure to different industries or different tools and different softwares had I not said yes to those things that were ultimately outside of my job description. And that's something I went into the job actively pursuing. I actively wanted exposure to as much as I could possibly have because I knew it would help me to accelerate my growth. If you've watched any of my other data analytics videos in the past, you'll know I'm a huge proponent of communication. It's the thing that sets apart 90% of data analysts. It's the thing that makes or breaks a good data analyst versus a great data analyst. Any type of analyst. Communication is so important for an analyst. And I'm telling you now, it's undoubtedly one of the reasons I was able to progress my career like I have been able to, is my ability to communicate. Communication for me comes from reading, the reading I did when I was younger. It's the thing that I see even on the hiring side of things. I've sat in hiring interviews where you'll have two incredibly technical analysts. They'll have incredible technical skills they'll be able to do incredible things but one might not have the ability to communicate as well as the other and so in that case we're always going to go with the one who can communicate better because as a data analyst as any type of analyst investment analyst actuarial analyst financial analyst communication is such a huge part of your role even as a data analyst where you might think you're just sitting in the background in the back office just squirreling away at data that's not the case you're presenting, you're on Teams calls, you're on Zoom calls, you're presenting to your clients, you're asking them questions, you're creating reports, and then you're presenting those reports and analysis to them at the end as well. You could be presenting to senior leadership, you could be presenting to your team, you could be presenting to your managers. Communication is so, so important, being able to communicate clearly, being able to communicate concisely and in a succinct manner. And that encompasses being able to understand a person or your client's level of technical expertise. And then bringing yourself either up or down to that level to be able to explain your analysis and findings to them. You have to maintain a culture of being able to constantly learn and adapt. I think that's something you can easily become complacent on. You're given a piece of work, you just do it the way it's been done, and you don't really have the wherewithal to maybe look at a different way of doing it. Maybe look at a new tool that's come out. Maybe see how that can apply. Or there's a process in place and you don't try and improve that process. For example, in my current role, I mean, I just started my current role. And if you want to see a video on my current role, how I got my current role and more on that, then let me know down in the comments and I'll definitely be making more videos on, on this whole journey that I'm on right now. But in my current role, there's a process that's a bit manual. They were explaining to me in a training video that's it's a bit manual. And so I started thinking of, wait a second, uh, could I use Python to automate this? Maybe I can. Maybe let me understand the process from the ground up, the way they do it, and then see how I can, maybe down the line, see how I can use Python to maybe automate it. Because it looks as though it's possible. And if the data that goes into the Python script complies with GDPR, then okay, let's see if I can do that. And that's something I did, albeit at a much smaller scale, in my first job. But once I understood the processes from the ground up, even the way they were doing it, I started thinking of ways in which I could maybe make them more efficient or maybe utilize a new tool, utilize AI was a huge introduction during the last two, three years. 
maybe how I could use AI to make bits of it easier. And so learning is a constant part if you want to accelerate your career growth. You need to almost outstrip your colleagues and become more adept and adaptable. Another thing that helped me accelerate my career growth and something that helped me become a senior data analyst in two years was developing a business understanding. Now, a lot of data analysts might just sit where they're put. They could perhaps lack the understanding of how a business works, what businesses do. They might just get caught up in the numbers and not what the numbers actually mean for the company. That's an important distinction to make. Being able to understand business being able to understand business data, being able to understand exactly where your analysis is going, really helps you to mold and specify your analysis, where otherwise it may very well be quite broad and really helps you to hone in on that analysis. That's helped me hugely. Take a business course, take some time working with other teams within the organization to understand exactly what the business is looking for exactly what your numbers are going to do. There's a whole lot you can do in two years. You can start off as a junior data analyst or even data analyst apprentice and propel yourself quite quickly, quite quickly. But it's again, a focus on skills, visibility. That's a huge thing actually. I wanna talk about visibility. People promote who they like, not necessarily who's the most deserving or the person with the most experience. People tend to get promoted depending on how well they're liked. And of course, there's also the part where you have to be competent at your job. But if it's between two competent people and one person's better or more well liked than the other, then you know who's gonna get hired. And that's just office politics. I hate that side of things, but it's part and parcel of accelerating your career growth. So get yourself in front of the right people. If that means you have to go in the office, then I'm afraid you're going to have to go in the office. I hate going in the office. I hated the London Underground. Traveling back and forth takes an hour. If there's a strong wind, then there's a, a 40 minute delay. I hated it. It was the worst part of my entire day. I didn't mind being in the office. It was okay. If you want to accelerate your career growth, you need to be visible. There's going to be senior managers who are in on certain days. There's going to be people who walk around the office and say, actually, could you help me with this? And then you're getting yourself in front of the right people. There's conversations that happen in the office that just don't happen when you're at home. And trust me, I know I push to work from home as much as I possibly can. But you also have to understand that being visible is important to accelerate your career growth. Now, here's the thing. Maybe I'm just not as good at being visible in the time that I'm in the office. Maybe someone else can be much more efficient with the time that they spend in the office in terms of being visible. And maybe that's the case, but being visible is unfortunately part of office politics. And if you really want that career boost, if you really want that to climb that career ladder, then you do have to be visible. It almost gives people the reassurance that you'll be there if you were to get promoted and be put in charge of a project, then you will be there to take care of it. It almost gives them that reassurance and that you'll be accessible if something should go wrong, you'll be accessible. Now, if you're interested in the exact skills that I focused on in the first month, the first year even, I'll cover those in another video. Let me know down in the comments and I'll make a video on that. The exact skills I focused on to get promoted to senior data analyst. But like I said, communication is a huge part of it. If you can corral a group of people, if you can make them laugh, if you can make them understand your data, then you're already halfway there. I wasn't supposed to be able to become a senior data analyst in two years, but it didn't happen by accident. It was carefully planned. And I definitely wanted to, I knew I'd started off as junior data analyst and I knew I wanted to skip a step somewhere. I knew I wanted to either skip the data analyst part, become a data analyst, and then skip the senior analyst part and jump straight to data manager. I knew I wanted to be able to skip a couple of steps. And yeah, so everything I did was carefully curated to be able to help me to achieve that goal. And I'm still not there yet. Let's see if I can go from senior data analyst to head of data. Let's see if that's possible next. I don't know if that's possible in the next two, three years, actually. That might be quite a quite a big jump. But let's see if, if we can skip a couple of steps. Maybe, maybe skip from senior data analyst to data consultant. Or we'll see what happens. But I'm going to try and do the same the same thing. I'm going to try and use the same playbook to accelerate my career growth as quick as I possibly can. So there you have it. That's about it for this video. Hopefully there was some some important information in there that would help you to accelerate your career as well. If this video was useful or entertaining, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.